This is the Brew News. Hello and welcome to the Brew News. We have with us today Chip Rossetti. He's an editor and scholar of Arabic literature. Chip Rossetti, welcome to the Brew News. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. Yeah. Uh, Chip, recently we were at the library, mm -hmm. yeah, and there was an event where uh, an a Quran, a very old Quran, mm -hmm. was gifted by the U.S. state to the library. Yes. Could you tell us about it? Yes, this was uh, this past Wednesday. Yeah. The uh, U.S. State Department gave a copy of a 1764 translation of the Quran into English by a translator named George Sale and uh, to the Muhammad bin Rashid Library here in Dubai. It was a, the reason it was so important, this translation, was that it was the same edition as a the translation of the Quran that Thomas Jefferson, the third U.S. president, owned in his lifetime. And it was the, um, that translation of the Quran really affected Jeff Jefferson's view of Islam on tolerance and understanding that uh, played a great role in the foundation of the United States of America in the late 18th century. That's quite interesting. Now, we're talking about the U former U.S. president, mm -hmm. right, Jefferson. Yes. Now, what made him buy the Quran in the first place? Uh, Thomas Jefferson purchased the Quran in 1767 when he was a young law student uh, oh. in Virginia. Uh, he was a young man at the time, uh, in his 20s, and he purchased it because he was interested in understanding oh. the world's legal systems, other legal systems in the world. And for him, oh. the Quran was certainly one of the foundations of Islamic law. And so uh, it was fairly rare at the time, uh, copies of the translations of the Quran in, at the time, the British colonies in North America. Uh, but it was a book that he held onto in his library for almost 50 years, I believe. But were there other presidents who actually, you know, uh, they went back to the Quran for more, you know, gleaning more you know, knowledge? No knowledge. I yeah. think Jefferson was probably the most, one of the more scholarly of the uh, early founding fathers. Uh -huh. um, and what was interesting that he, this edition of the Quran, the translation that he chose by George Sale was itself remarkable. Um, it had originally been published in 1734 mm -hmm. and it was notable because there had been a long tradition in uh, Europe of translations of the Quran that were polemical, hostile to Islam, used mm -hmm. for religious disputation. But George Sale's translation was one that uh, was sought to understand uh, mm -hmm. the history of Islam, the life of the Prophet Muhammad um, took a very different tack in presenting what the Quran meant to to Europeans, to who none of you know, to a non non Muslim readership, uh, and particularly George Sale's translation, which we assume Jefferson would have read, also included a 200-page essay, to begin with, about the history of Islam, uh, the life of the Prophet, uh, the five pillars of Islam, many of the things that would have set provided context for understanding the, the text, the translation itself. So it's quite fortunate that we had an early um, founder of the United States, uh, at the time a young man, who uh, showed this level of curiosity about the world and was willing to learn from other sources, in this case from uh, the Quran, um, to influence his own thinking about politics, about what would become the United States at the time. Um, he, Jefferson himself, found much to admire in, in Islam um, uh, during his lifetime. Uh, no, no, talking about influence, okay, mm -hmm. this is quite interesting. How or in what way did the Quran influence the constitution of the U.S. or the way the presidents or the founding fathers, how, how, how were they affected with it? Yeah, I think, I think the biggest influence was probably in the debates that surrounded the adoption mm -hmm. of this new constitution, mm -hmm. where it was presented to the uh, people of the United States at the time, uh, having just at the end of the, the revolution, American Revolution, um, and was put up for adoption and would be voted on by all the 13 states. Um, and there were arguments back and forth. Is this going mm -hmm. to preserve our rights? Is this going to allow us to, is this going to um, make us freer people? Is this going, to, what is this new constitution going to do? And what some of the arguments about it, against it, involved religion and um, and people insisting well this is not going to preserve what had been at the time sort of a, a sort of the establishment of religion a certain type of Christian Protestant uh, religion you had to be an Anglican uh, which is a variety of denomination of, of Christianity in order to hold public office and what Thomas Jefferson 
and some of his um, uh, colleagues who wanted to people to adopt this constitution wanted to emphasize was that this was a new society, one that was based on a much more open approach to civil rights, to sort of um, what it meant to be a citizen of this country, and that you did not need to be a particular religion in order to um, to participate fully in the United States. And the example that was often turned to was Muslims. At the time, it was almost a thought experiment. There were not many, they did not envision, uh, a lot, there were not a lot of Muslims in public life in, uh, in the early United States. But, um, but this was something that they, Jefferson was envisioning well ahead of his time. There would one day be Muslim citizens in places like the United States. Jews, Muslims, Catholics, Hindus, there would be other, other religious groups that conceivably could be citizens and should have full rights, full rights as citizens in this new republic. So this was something that was um, um, certainly a, I, I think it's, it's, it's gratifying to see him thinking about those things so early on. At that on. age. At that age, at a time it was very much more. Um, Quite impressive. Yes. The way yeah. they used to think, and yes. way, way ahead of their time. Yes, yes right? it was, yes. Um, so this is um, this this is something that I think made it so exciting this past week mm -hmm. when the U.S. ambassador and the U.S. State Department mm -hmm. gifted a copy of this yeah. Quran, the same edition. Um, the original Jefferson's original Quran is now in the Library of Congress in the United States. This is the same printing, same 1764 um, edition. The same edition and. Okay. It's interesting, it's sort of almost like it's come full circle to a place like the UAE, where it's going right. to live here, another sort of society with a very sort of open, tolerant approach mm -hmm. to uh, being openness to the world. Um, and certainly in a library, um, which is a, a, a place for learning, of learning about other True. experiences in the world, other approaches, viewpoints. Um, so it's... You're based in Abu Dhabi, I'm right? based in Abu Dhabi. And you've been in UAE since? Uh, since last August, but last I've been August. coming back and forth for at least 12 yeah. years for my, my job, which is um, mm. a translation series from Arabic to English. So uh, how has your experience been in this country, which actually, which, you know, which upholds mm -hmm. the values of mm -hmm. culture, with tolerance and so much more? Uh, it's been wonderful. It's a wonderful place to live. Um, I've been back and forth, as I said, for years. Uh, and having studied Arabic and having lived other places in the Arab world, it's it's certainly a wonderful place to to raise a family. Uh, and so, what is different now is uh, since August, having brought my family here to introduce my children to what it's like to live in a very cosmopolitan, open place like this. So, do you think that this will break the stereotype kind of thing? Uh, anyway? Well, I I hope so. I mean, it's certainly it's it's uh, it's nice to see these kinds of connections and to remember that sometimes history has these kinds of interesting connections we don't think about. We are very concentrated on the present. We may think we know lots of things in the present, but sometimes there are things in, in history that we can certainly find, um, find resonances with our present day, find uh, instances of tolerance, of uh, surprising, um, surprising sort of uh, understandings of the world in, a, in an earlier period. And uh, I hope that something like the Jefferson Quran might sort of contribute to that. Thank you very much for being with us, Chair. Thank it's you very been much. It's a pleasure. Chair. Wonderful to speak pleasure. to you too. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Like and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon to get notification from the Brew News.